Please welcome Guy Abrahams, who's the Worldwide Strategic Marketing Director of Zenith Optimedia. Ten years ago, we were the first agency to apply a rigorous approach to improving the effectiveness of media spend. And we did this because ROI was our client's number <coughs> one priority. Becoming the ROI agency has seen our business grow, and we're now the fastest growing media network in the world. But times have changed. And this year, we launched a new approach called Live ROI. And what's different about Live ROI? Well, Live ROI is about aggregating online data to get stronger insights, then use those insights to create engaging communications across paid, owned, and earned touch points. We believe that story and data and design equals beautiful information. Whether it's Twitter showing the popularity of stars during the MTV Awards, or whether it's looking at flight paths across the US of A across a day, whether it's seeing data live about the performance of a car or knowing the providence of a cup of coffee, or my favorite, whether it's tracking feelings from social media around the world and seeing how they work across sex, across age, across geography, by subject matter, even by the weather. So I'm going to flick through. OK. There we go. Brilliant. So um, we talk about a lot of this stuff like it's brand new. And actually, it's not completely new. This is the very first Guardian from May 1821. Uh, the first news page, the front page was uh, full of adverts, which uh, obviously you know, we wouldn't necessarily be able to do now. And the back page had all the news on. And this big table there is a table of data. Basically, it was leaked data, much the same way that uh, WikiLeaks is leaked data. It was just a list of schools in Manchester. And it was leaked to us by uh, somebody because the official information was rubbish. All it said was the you know, number of pupils, uh, the amount of the school budget was, and so on. But it, in 1821, very, very political data because it was 60 years before education was compulsory. And so look at the data here. We've got four stock tickers. Uh, Apple, Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft, and they're all going through transition over time. So you think, okay, stock price, that's a relatively easy thing for me to understand. But as I go through, and these are from Stanford's visualization group, as I go through different uh, visualizations, you'll form different opinions, or the story itself will change. So let's see if we can get it to go. There we go. So the story itself starts to change as you start to look at it, because the data being visualized is a little bit between art. So here's an old stock ticker. Here's the new kind of stuff, your donuts and things like that. Um, I'm not really sure what to get from this, um, what it's telling me in terms of change. And that's sort of the beauty. Here's a tree map uh, where you can see uh, things changing as well. So I'm going to stop it there for a second. This is really talking about accurate visualizations, telling the story in the most accurate way. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is a great visualization I like to make, try to make it simple. Um, rather than using data, I took something else. When I look at these set of slides put together, what do I think? Cute, fun, what a great guy. But if one slide is out of order, or I add something different that doesn't match, <laughs> what do I think? What a jerk, right? And the thing is, it, all it does is reinforce my natural bias. So how do you think, apart from obviously that kind of example, what else do you think we should be talking to our clients about to convince them that, to hand over their data, to collaborate, uh, to kind of be able to do these things live? Yeah, I think there's, two, there's probably two big trends that will change all of what we do over the next 10 years. The first one I mentioned is the death of static data, dashboards, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, these info, infographics, they'll die. Um, while they're cool, I, I think it's going to be like Millie Vanilli. It'll, it'll come and go very quickly. Basically, I think, um, you know, there are still some companies out there who make some money from selling data, but it must be getting less and less because now the thing is you get money from, you know, what you can do with the data. So we, st we still have, there are a couple of big organizations, you know, who won't give us their data to do visualizations with because it's what they sell. But actually, you know, they did, then they'd have something that loads of people would see and it would be out there, which is kind of the point, isn't it? So. I mean, if the final thing is, is media owners, if they give us their APIs, then we understand the medium better and we can come up with more relevant activity in that media. And I think it's a question about all of us you know, asking the people who have data to open the APIs so people can make better use of it. So, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for